National Public Sleeping Day, Tony. Do you have trouble sleeping in public? What? Hey. What, about, what? Did you, what? Did You're you say public. something? You're on national oh. cable television. You know what, Tone? <laughs> I sleep on the yeah. train, on the Amtrak, on the Acela. Is that public? Does that mean I'm I sleeping think that's in semi public? semi-public. It's semi-public because you're always in first class, so it's a little different <laughs> for you. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Sixers are rolling. Kyla Murray takes his negotiations public, and baseball's self-imposed deadline is upon us. But we begin today with something that happened on Saturday that had never happened before. The top six college basketball teams all lost on the same day. Gonzaga... Arizona, Auburn, Purdue, Kansas, and Kentucky. Not only did the top six teams all lose, so did the ninth, Texas Tech. Wilbon, if you had to pick one team to trust, which one would it be? Tony, I, I'm, I'm lucky I don't have to pick a team yet. I mean, I got to do it when we get to Selection Sunday in a couple of weeks. But you know, I told you in November, yeah. they're going to be at least 10 number one ranked teams. Now, this week's number one didn't change because they kept Gonzaga there. And I would have I done the same thing, Tony, if I was voting. But, Tony, I don't want to trust any of them. Why? I, I could say Gonzaga because they're still number one. They've probably been number one more days. My, my instinct is to say Baylor because even though Baylor's got a player or two injured and out, they seem to just manufacture people from the bottom of the roster up like they did last year. They have athletes. They have people now. I'm sitting around in the NBA studio doing games, and I, I, I turn to like Jalen Rose or Stephen A. or Greeny, and I say, who's that kid on the NBA roster? He goes, oh, yeah, he was like the ninth guy on Baylor. So I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to Baylor just because they got people. But, Tone, I don't trust any of them, and I know you don't either. March Madness is going to be so great. So cool because of this dynamic yeah. to me. So we, we had Pat Forty of Sports Illustrated on the podcast this morning because of this oddity. And I asked right. him about this, the, the rarity of it. And he said, remember a couple of things. One is they were all on the road. All. And two is they were all on the road in conference games. And he said, there's not a big conference in the country where there are any undefeated teams within the conference. So if you then ask me who do I trust, my answer is I trust no one. It's the same answer that you have. Yeah. I will make a small case for Duke in this regard. Duke has four losses by a total of nine points. Duke has not lost by more than two points since November. But you and I have seen Duke, and they don't look particularly great. No, it's not a runaway. In fact, I've seen all of these teams for small stretches of time over a couple same of months. Here. Same and here. the team that I thought, when I saw them play about 10 minutes of what I thought was flawless basketball, the team that I thought could win was Kansas, and they just went out and lost. So I will tell you, it will not surprise me at all if any one of 20 teams wins the NCAA. But this is what surprises me, Mike, how deep and how good the SEC is. Yeah. Because it used to be yeah. just Kentucky. Maybe and Florida hard, occasionally. Tennessee, Maybe Vanderbilt Auburn, occasionally. Florida's better. Yeah. Mississippi yeah. State once in a while. Arkansas. But I asked Pat Forty about that, Mike, and he said they have so much football money. They put it into hiring coaches and they put it into facilities and they've got name, image, and likeness because those are real colleges yeah. down there. Yeah. And they are able to get players, and that surprised me. Well, let's see if those players can get it done in late March or early April. That's another whole story. Let's move to the NBA, where the Sixers have rolled through their first two games with James Harden on the floor. Joel Embiid scored 37, including 23 free throws yesterday in a win over the sorry no-account Knicks. And Harden added a triple-double. Embiid says he feels the duo is unstoppable. Meanwhile, Kyrie scored 38 to lead the Nets past the Bucks in Milwaukee. Tom, which one mm -hmm. of these results is more significant to you? Um, the Nets beating Milwaukee in Milwaukee is a very nice win. I don't personally believe it has any particular significance because Durant isn't back and Ben Simmons has yet to play a minute. And so I think that the team that we see now winning this particular game that maybe Milwaukee doesn't take seriously is not the team we're going to see down the road. So I will say, for me, the answer is the Sixers, and I want to go to a couple of numbers that I find astonishing. 
It's only two games. I give you it's two right. games. They're averaging 129 points in these games. They beat Minnesota, a pretty good team. They beat the Knicks, who stink. James Harden has 56 points in two games, 28 assists, and 15 rebounds, the and he assists. shot 15 of 26 the from the assists. floor. Embiid, yeah. as you mentioned, had 37 yesterday, 34 before that. So that's 71 and 2. Mike, the two of them have 127 points in two games. So don't tell me about time to adjust. There's no time to adjust. They've adjusted. They're, no, they're terrific, Tony. I think that they are the team. If I got to put one team and stick with it. Look, I said Milwaukee and Miami as recently as three weeks ago, and I've been saying that's its opening night. I'm not going to back off it because those teams are still in position. But the reason I'm going to say, and I don't disagree with the words you said, but the reason I'm going to say Kyrie with his 38 at Milwaukee is precisely because there was no Durant and Ben Simmons is still a rumor. And Kyrie beat them. Yeah. There's just something that's off about Milwaukee. I don't know what it is, particularly, Tone. We got some time, and I don't want to overreact because you might be right. Milwaukee might have said, eh, those aren't the nets we're going to get in, in right, May. Right. So I don't know. But, Tony, they needed that. Listen, the, Tony, the Nets have been so bad. They had lost 13 of 15, I think it was. They've been so bad, Tone. They look like they're going to be in the play-in. They could not go 0-3 sort of yesterday and then Monday, Tuesday, and then go into Thursday when they think they're going to have Durant back. They couldn't go 0-3 in those games. There's pressure on Brooklyn to win now. There's so few games okay. left, Tone. They look like they're playing meat. So, you know, that's what they look like now. So I'm going to suggest to you off here and there. Yep. They look across the court yes. and they go, I don't see anybody I care about. I'm going to take the night off. <laughs> yes. And no I will question. repeat to you what I said on Friday. When I said to you about the 76ers, they're going to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. They're going to win them. They're going to be in the NBA Finals. I believe it is James Harden's last chance. You know, I think that Embiid is yappy and he hasn't won anything. I think they can win. I, I, I do. I think that Harden has to be great, and I think he's going to be great. Let's move to, to deadline day for the baseball negotiations. Owners have reportedly threatened to cancel a month's worth of games if a deal doesn't get done by midnight. Commissioner Rob Manfred joined the talks earlier today and left after 40 minutes. John Heyman of the MLB Network reports that both sides are still working at it. Wilbon, what does it mean that they're still talking? Nothing. I mean, we've seen these two sides talk in previous years. They talk until the cows come home. And it means nothing. It means nothing. We, we had Jeff Passett. He told us the two sides hate each other. It's just like it's always been. It's the Hatfields and the McCoys. They find the other side. Each finds the other loathsome. They don't want to talk. They take as many breaks, I, I'm told, as they can. The commissioner leaves 40 minutes. Really? it. You're not playing any real games yet. When, when you finally get a deal, if you get a deal, all the things that they said were set in stone today, they're going to be liquid. Yeah. They're not going to be but set in stone. They're going to Tony, change them all. Of course they are. When I said I'm not paying attention to any of it, I'm not paying attention to these artificial phony baloney deadlines. You can solve and this and thing fine. and declare the season starts whenever you declare it's going to start. Right. Right, and if you want to get to 162, you play double headers, and if you want to make more money, you play them yeah. evening and you know and daytime, and and that's fine. And we'll see what happens down the road. But I'm not, I just don't think that anything that happens on February 28th is actually meaningful, unless the season was going to start March 1st. Let's take a break. Coming up, should Kyler Murray's latest move encourage or discourage the Cardinals? Manfred should be here. There's no threat of afternoon thunderstorms like Florida every damn day. And just when you think it yeah. can't go any lower for the Lakers, it does. Completing life's greatest mysteries, but you would rather 
that we talk about Kyler Murray. And so with that, I reach into the mailbox. Did I have a vote on uh, that? Does the statement released by Kyler Murray's agent make you optimistic or pessimistic about his relationship with the Cardinals? You know, Tony, I, I don't know that I jumped to that when I heard this. And now I'm out here in the desert, of course, where this story is front and center. I mean, it's, you know, in back of the suns, but it's still front and center. And Tony, I don't care about his relationship with the Cardinals. What I care about with Kyler Murray is, is he the quarterback to lead a team deep into the playoffs? He's got a lot of talent. He gives us highlights every season. He seems to start off seasons well. He's not very good late in the season or in the one playoff he's been in. So I don't care about his relationship mm -hmm. with the Cardinals. I mean, that's for them to figure out. What I care about, look at the relationship fractured as it is between Aaron Rodgers and the, and, the, and the Packers. At least Aaron Rodgers, you know, he gets you to a point deeper than Kyler Murray. Do I think Kyler Murray is that long-term quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals? I've been telling you for months. No, I don't think that. I think there are issues, and I don't care about a salary demand, which is what this is. This is a hunt for more yeah. money. Yeah, this is definitely a salary demand. And let me just state, first of all, this is issued by his agent. And you can fire an agent anytime you want. If Kyler Murray comes to believe that this agent has put him with this statement in a bad position, you fire him and you never hear his name again. What it essentially says is Kyler Murray, one, wants to be in Arizona forever, and two, wants to win a Super yeah. Bowl, and three, yeah. so pay him money right now. Pay him a lot of money. It is a ransom note. The agent is trying to hold the Cardinals hostage to get this money because money talks and we all know what walks. I don't know if this is the smartest move in the world, especially on the heels of where the owner, Michael Bidwell, said, put me in the category of I love him. I don't I know why, why you'd want to then force his hand and demand money right now. If I am Kyler Murray, I may backtrack a little bit. I don't think this is a smart play. That's just me. I, I don't think this. that he necessarily wants to be here forever. I'm not about to presume that. I'm not about to presume well, that Michael said. Bidwell is in the cat. I don't care what they say. Well, people that's what he said. Say junk all we can the only time. go on what people it's, say. No, it's up to us to be skeptics and say, I don't believe that garbage. I don't believe it. Can we move on? Can we move Maybe. on to the next one? Maybe. How bad was last night's loss for the Lakers? Yeah, I don't care what the Lakers say. I'm going to watch the game. The Lakers were garbage again. And this is the worst. They lost mm -hmm. by 28 to New Orleans. Look, I know since getting C.J. McCollum that New Orleans has gotten better. I mean, they beat the Suns the other night. They've gotten better. Good for them. They're trying to hunt down at least a spot in the play-in. But, Tony, the Lakers should have gotten booed. And I'm not even for booing your home team, booing your team. The Lakers are dreadful. They're not engaged. They don't start the games with any energy. They don't seem to have a plan. LeBron James puts up sometimes spectacular numbers. And LeBron used to lead teams that were like AAU teammates to the finals. He did. Can't do that anymore because he puts up great numbers. It doesn't mean anything. Look, I told you a long time ago, the Lakers are toast. We have to pay attention to them because they're the Lakers. But they right. are a waste of time. So let me go through the numbers for those people that didn't hear any Why? of these numbers because we didn't give any numbers. They trailed by 32 at one point. This is at home. They lost by 28 to the Pelicans who are behind them in the standings. Yeah, the Lakers were number. booed and the owner, Jeannie Buss, walked out. Looks like another perfect day. I love L.A. They stink. <laughs> OK, they LeBron's do. numbers are very good, but they don't produce wins. Russell Westbrook was better last year in Washington. I don't know what's happened to him. Mike, I don't understand how Vogel is still the coach. I really don't. And I said what I'm going to say now about a week ago. I'm going to say it again. Rob Polinka had better get rid of LeBron James before LeBron James gets rid of Rob Polinka. They're yeah, in a terrible happening. circumstance now. This yeah. is a great franchise. They are sinking right in front of our eyes. If the owner walks out and people don't boo the Lakers, they booed no. the Lakers. I don't know how they could fall behind the they Pelicans in Portland, but they might. They earned it. They might. They earned the boos, Tony. Enough female. You said they Let's stink. Let's take one last break. They stink. They do. They still to come, but still to come. What does Ali Marpet surprise plating life's greatest mysteries, but you would rather that we talk about Kyler Murray and so with that. I reach into the mailbox. Did I have a vote on uh, that? Does the statement released by Kyler Murray's agent make you optimistic or pessimistic about his relationship with the Cardinals? 
You know, Tony, I, I don't know that I jumped to that when I heard this. And now I'm out here in the desert, of course, where this story is front and center. I mean, it's, you know, in back of the suns, but it's still front and center. And Tony, I don't care about his relationship with the Cardinals. What I care about with Kyler Murray is, is he the quarterback to lead a team deep into the playoffs? He's got a lot of talent. He gives us highlights every season. He seems to start off seasons well. He's not very good late in the season or in the one playoff he's been in. So I don't care about his relationship mm -hmm. with the Cardinals. I mean, that's for them to figure out. What I care about, look at the relationship fractured as it is between Aaron Rodgers and the, and the, and the Packers. At least Aaron Rodgers, you know, he gets you to a point deeper than Kyler Murray. Do I think Kyler Murray is that long-term quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals? I've been telling you for months. No, I don't think that. I think there are issues, and I don't care about a salary demand, which is what this is. This is a hunt for more yeah. money. Yeah, this is definitely a salary demand. And let me just state, first of all, this is issued by his agent. And you can fire an agent anytime you want. If Kyler Murray comes to believe that this agent has put him with this statement in a bad position, you fire him and you never hear his name again. What it essentially says is Kyler Murray, one, wants to be in Arizona forever, and two, wants to win a Super yeah. Bowl, and three, yeah. so pay him money right now. Pay him a lot of money. It is a ransom note. The agent is trying to hold the Cardinals hostage to get this money because money talks and we all know what walks. I don't know if this is the smartest move in the world, especially on the heels of where the owner, Michael Bidwell, said, put me in the category of I love him. I don't I know why, why you'd want to then force his hand and demand money right now. If I am Kyler Murray, I may backtrack a little bit. I don't think this is a smart play. That's just me. I, I don't think this. that he necessarily wants to be here forever. I'm not about to presume that. I'm not about to presume well, that Michael Bidwell is in the cat. I don't care what they say. Well, people that's what he said. Say junk all we can the only time. go on what people it's, say. No, it's up to us to be skeptics and say, I don't believe that garbage. I don't believe it. Can we move on? Can we move Maybe. on to the next one? Maybe. How bad was last night's loss for the Lakers? Yeah, I don't care what the Lakers say. I'm going to watch the game. The Lakers were garbage again. And this is the worst. They lost mm -hmm. by 28 to New Orleans. Look, I know since getting C.J. McCollum that New Orleans has gotten better. I mean, they beat the Suns the other night. They've gotten better. Good for them. They're trying to hunt down at least a spot in the play-in. But, Tony, the Lakers should have gotten booed. And I'm not even for booing your home team, booing your team. The Lakers are dreadful. They're not engaged. They don't start the games with any energy. They don't seem to have a plan. LeBron James puts up sometimes spectacular numbers. And LeBron used to lead teams that were like AAU teammates to the finals. He did. Can't do that anymore because he puts up great numbers. It doesn't mean anything. Look, I told you a long time ago, the Lakers are toast. We have to pay attention to them because they're the Lakers. But they right. are a waste of time. So let me go through the numbers for those people that didn't hear any Why? of these numbers because we didn't give any numbers. They trailed by 32 at one point. This is at home. They lost by 28 to the Pelicans who are behind them in the standings. Yeah, I the gave Lakers them that were booed, number. and the owner, Jeannie Buss, walked out. Looks like another perfect day. I love L.A. They stink. Okay, <laughs> they LeBron's do. numbers are very good but they don't produce wins. Russell Westbrook was better last year in Washington. I don't know what's happened to him. Mike, I don't understand how Vogel is still the coach. I really don't. And I said what I'm going to say now about a week ago. I'm going to say it again. Rob Polinka had better get rid of LeBron James before LeBron James gets rid of Rob Polinka. They're yeah, in a terrible happening. circumstance now. This yeah. is a great franchise. They are sinking right in front of our eyes. If the owner walks out and people don't boo the Lakers, they booed the no. Lakers. I don't know how they could fall behind the they Pelicans in Portland, but they might. They earned it. They might. They earned the boos, Tony. Enough email. You said they Let's stink. Take one last break. They stink. They do. They still to come, but still to come. What does Ali Marpet surprise?